Hello, everyone. I'm Alana Lanier. I'm the founder and creative director at Team Toad House and Toad House Games. As you probably know, Toad House Games is a visual novel indie game studio, and we are currently hosting a visual novel game jam on itch.io. Uh, I'm sure mod, one of the mods can throw the link to the game jam below. We have some workshops from industry professionals who work at Toad House to show you different aspects of creating a visual novel. And thank you, Jeffrey. Post the link right there. Um, the goal is to make it as user-friendly as possible. So if you really want to make a video game, you really want to make a visual novel, but you're too intimidated, this is the game jam for you. We're trying to make everything as easily digestible as possible. Thank you, Maya, for the link. Jeffrey beat me to it as always. Don't worry, Maya. All the mods are good mods. Don't worry. Okay, something achievable. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> so, oh goodness, the coffee's hitting me. Let's start with downloading RunPy. So, what you're going to do is you're going to open up your favorite browser. I have Chrome. And I'm going to share my screen. You're going to runpy.org, and I'm going to put this link in chat. There you are. Yes, and as the bot reminded you, you have a freebie subscription if you have an Amazon account, so please consider giving it to us. It helps us run game jams like this. So go to runpy.org, and this is, runpy is an open source, free, visual novel um, software engine. Uh, basically, a game engine allows you to code within it and create a game. So some examples of game engines are RenPy, Unity, Unreal, Game Maker, Game Maker 2, um, Godot, Twine. They're all great for different things. You decide what's best for you. I personally love RenPy. Love RenPy. Um, it's a very powerful engine. It does use the language Python, that's what RenPy, the Pi in RenPy is Python, uh, but you do not need to know how to code in Python in order to use RenPy. It is very user friendly and it is very beginner friendly, so we'll walk through this together, no worries. So let's see, yay, we did it, we did it y'all, we did it, okay, so you're going to go to RenPy.org, I put the link in chat. Uh, you can also type it in, obviously. And it looks like this. Now, this website has a lot of things. It not only has RunPy for you to download, it also has the documentation. So documentation um, means kind of like a... a book of commands you can use in an engine. So RunPy is somewhat notorious for not having the greatest documentation, um, but there is quite a lot. There, there's a lot. It's more of the documentation isn't exactly user friendly, so a lot of people get confused with it. But I will walk you through it, no worries. So you can see the getting started, and you can read through all this um, by clicking on to documentation, then getting started, and then see how it says like the RunPy launcher. Um, it explains to you everything. There's also a really useful RenPy Discord server, and there's um, LemmySoft, which is a useful RenPy forum. But we are going to go to the homepage of RenPy, and we're going to go to download right here up top. Now, if you are on a um, a PC, Mac, Linux computer as opposed to a mobile, that's what this will be about. You'll just need the .exe. So you click on this and it will download. So I'll give everyone a second to do that and I will read through chat. Because I am out of practice and reading through chat and doing things while jolted on coffee is kind of proving difficult. Documentation give any extra stuff? Yes. Um, the documentation explains basically everything. Any little aspect, um, it not only goes through the basics, but it goes through the more 
niche uses of RemPy. If you want to do something very specific, you can probably find it in the documentation. And if you can't, you can absolutely ask on a forum. For example, um, if you want to learn more about, we're going to go over some basic flags, but more about flags or more about maybe you want some sort of a, um, a date system or a, a currency or inventory system, you can do all of that in RenPy and the documentation absolutely helps with that. Okay, what am I doing? We're going to go to, oh, I'm gonna open up RunPy, that's what I'm gonna do. If I go like this, it keeps it perfect. So everyone's got it downloaded. Good job, everyone. Good stream, nailed it, let's leave. <laughs> you all have RunPy downloaded now, I'm sure you can take it from here, just go ahead. Just, just you know, code in it, just step one, code, step two, make a visual novel, step three, I don't know, and step four, profit, it's fun. Okay, so here is my RunPy. <laughs> so you can see all of our Toad House games. So you can see Call Me Sarah, Cultivating Habits. Default settings is just a blank one that I have open in case I royally F up my like options page <laughs> and I need to remember what it said originally because I like to experiment. Uh, Good Look at Home Cooking, Roll for Confidence, which is our next game coming out, Tea Lightful Introductions, and then Tutorial and Question are the two that you'll see on your RenPy launcher. So these are the ones that come with RenPy. The power of chat, yes. You like to change your avatar, yes. Thank you Streamlabs. Okay, so now that we're actually in, let's go through some of this. So, so you create a new project, that's where you create your new project. If you wanna go to documentation or the RenPy website, that's where this is. If you um, see here where it says active project, if you click on another one, see how it says active project. So these are all the files for particular projects. So roll for confidence, active project. You can see the directories, actions down here, and edit files, as well as if you wanna check for updates, your preferences, and launch project. So what we're going to do is, hmm, let me create a new project with you first. And then we'll go through the tutorial and I can show you what comes with RemPy and then we'll make a little mini game. How's that sound? So we're going to click on create a new project. I'm going to switch to this because it's probably going to pop my um, documents up and I don't want that to be shown. All right, so you click on create a new project. It says you'll be creating an English language project. Change the launcher language and preferences to create a project in another language. That's totally fine. Continue. It might ask you what editor you want to use. So let me show you that real quick. Uh, here. So if you look under preferences, you can choose your A language here, a whole bunch of languages, including Pig Latin, and your text editor. I use Atom. So if something pops up asking you for your text editor, I highly recommend Atom. It would look like this, select editor. Highly recommend Atom if you can. However, if you like another text editor that's on this list, feel free to use that too. Cool. So we're going to create a new project. Um, I don't know when it pops up because it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it and I've got some NDA stuff on my computer, so continue. Please enter the name of your project. So let's name it um, Toad House Jam Tutorial. Should you link Adam? I don't need to. Um, if you click on um, one, I don't know if it does during this process, however, when we go to, when we click on script, when we open up our first bit of scripting the game, it will absolutely prompt you then to choose your editor. So you can click on Atom and it automatically downloads it for you. You never have to go to the Atom website or anything like that. You can if you'd like to, but you really don't need to. Okay, Toad House Jam Tutorial. Continue. Um, so I named it. Now, choice. What resolution should the project use? Although RenPy can scale the window up and down, this is the initial size of the window, the size at which assets should be drawn and the size of which assets will be the sharpest. The default is 1280 by 720. 
So I do all of our Toad House games in 920 by 1080. Um, that is standard full screen because I like art. Oh yeah, of course, I'd be happy to. Here we are. Um, so that's what I choose. You can choose whatever. 1280 by 720 is a perfect um, compromise, as it says, especially for slower running machines or your own preference. Um, the smaller ones, uh, if you think of like more classic visual novels like Clannad, um, they have a smaller window. So that would be the smaller one. So let's, because they say the default is 1280 by 720, let's go with the default, shall we? So seven, this one. So we click on that one and see it highlights as you go along. So the bold one is what you're clicking. I always do this for Toad House, but since it recommends that, let's go with that and see what happens. How's that mix of microphone to, uh, to music? Let me know. Continue. So now we're choosing our color scheme. Do we want a dark or do we want a light? So whether this is for the menu and GUI, you can always change this later. GUI is graphical user interface. So basically any um, menu screens. So this is just general and it sets it up for a quick project. You can always change all of this later and I'll show you how, um, but it's good to kind of get a sense. So what color things do you want? So for Toad House Jam, I think we should go with a green because toads and maybe a dark as opposed to a light because I like the way the green kind of looks on the dark. So we continue here, creating the new project. Oh, maybe because I already have it set up, it doesn't ask me where to save it. So at some point it might ask you where you want to save it. I highly recommend um, creating a folder in your documents folder specifically for your t for your for your rempi games um and keeping them all in separate folders it will just make it a lot easier later on we are making jam out of toads jeffrey <laughs> okay so welcome in everyone we're at the point where we have downloaded rempi and we have created a new project. We clicked on new project and we just followed the prompts. So here it is, it's on our list. And if you were to go where you're saving the games, like if you were to go to the documentation folder on your Windows, for example, and you look for the folder that you indicated, it will be right there. It will be a folder that says Toad House Jam Tutorial. I'd show you mine, but NDA stuff. So, Edit files. So the script is where we're going to actually write the script. Now RenPy sees everything as one big script. So you'll see even when we create a different RPY file for our call actions, if this doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it, I'll explain it later. Um, it reads it as if it's one big long script, just so you know, put that in the back of your mind. Um, Options, GUI, and screens, we'll play in those a bit later, but script is the big one you have to be mindful of. Now, before we click on that, I just wanna show you game, base, images, audio, GUI. These are all the folders that are on your computer that are underneath this. Rempi made them for you. So for example, if we click on game, you'll see that under Team Toad House, Rempi Game, see how I made a different folder? Rempi already asked me, so it just, it didn't ask me this time. Um, so I have documents, Team Toad House, then RunPy Games, and then Toad House Jam Tutorial. So it made under game, if you see RunPy Games, these are all my games. So Jam, Toad House Jam Tutorial. It made all this. I didn't have to do any of it. That was made when we went through the wizard. So game, so here's the game folder. So this is where you'll put if you want a sound in your menu, like for your for your splash screen in the beginning, things like that, that goes here. Can you make the windows a bit bigger? Yes, absolutely. Windows capture, display capture, this one. We'll only be in this one for a second. 
Um, if you see underneath your folders, there'll be audio, cache, GUI, images, saves, a whole bunch of things. It made it for you. You don't have to worry about any of that. Of course, let me know if that's better or if you still need it bigger beyond that. My pleasure. <laughs> Lauren says that can be useful for VO in some of these. Yes. So um, your images folder is also very important. If you click on that, it is a quick key to your images. So see tutorial or the Toad House Jam tutorial, game and images. That's just, you can also just click on images here. But it's nice if like you're looking for your sprites and you wanna remember what the angry one was named or something like that. Then audio. So this is where you would put your VO, your sound effects, things of that need, soundscapes. And then GUI, this was all created for us via the, the wizard that we set up. Now see this window icon.png? So RunPy does a lot of things for you. And a lot of the time, all you have to do is replace certain things. So your Windows icon, the little icon that you double click when you open up your project, you'd put this here and you would literally just name it this and you'd replace that file with this and see how it's 250 by 250. Just make sure it's the right size and then just drag it into this folder and replace it with this, this exact name. That's the only thing you have to make sure that you're naming the things exactly as they come, caps and all, and it will change out what the Windows icon is for you. So you don't have to worry about it. And don't freak out too much about any of this, but just to show you, these are like the button things you can see when we go into it. This is where you change all of that. So if you want particular sliders or you want some sort of cute thing with your GUI and your menus, this is where you do it. Okay, so I'll show you what comes actually just with a, um, a blank run pie game. Let me quickly catch up a chat first. Everyone drink some water because Waterbot says so. Maya says, oh, so if you want to make your own GUI, you can replace the files. Absolutely. In fact, um, later on, I'll show you Good Looking Home Cooking and you can see our script and our files and all of that. Okay, launch project. So there we are. We have our title version one, so as we say we're patching it, we can change this in, it's either options or uh, screens, I forgot which one. Um, so see, all built into RunPy already, we have the save slots, and RunPy after choices, I'll show you how to code in simple choices. After every choice, see this A, that's auto saves, automatic saves. It will save after every choice. However, the player has to go in and save their game themselves if they want numerous save slots. There's also quick saves. Um, I'll show you that in a second as well. Preferences, all built in. There's left, right, disable, so that's... Um, roll back side. Oh, I just lost my train of thought. I forget what that is. Roll back side. I think that has to do with the history. I forget, I'm sorry. Um, this is if it's full screen or if it's windowed. See, lovely. Um, this is if you're skipping. So I'll show you in a second the skip feature. Um, this means you can make it so that it only skips unseen text. Uh, if, if, if it's all this is off, it will only skip uh, what you've already done. But if you don't care and you want to even skip unseen text, meaning text you haven't read yet, you can click that. If you want to continue skipping after choices, um, you can do that. Uh, the default is that you have to click skip again after a choice and it will skip transitions, meaning if we code in a transition and we make it all pretty, it will skip that so it just goes really fast. Uh, we can toggle all the volumes of all this. We can mute it all. Um, the auto forward is the uh, skip, how fast, and the text speed is the default text speed. Now, I coded my own default text speed because I do a lot with um, slowing down text and speeding up text depending on the character, if they're thinking or not. So I actually, you'll see, got rid of this. Um, but in a normal game, you can make it faster or slower. So far, so good. Any questions? Hope everyone's 
doing well so far. Let me know any questions, just pop it in there. Okay, so about, you can also change this. I'll show you how. Um, the rule with RemPy is that it's open source and free. The only thing is that you have to credit it. So something like this, or like how at the end of our credits, we say this was made in RemPy and open source. Like there's a legal blurb that you have to include. Help, this is um, controls. I actually change this in our games to controls as opposed to help. But this shows you all this. And then quit uh, closes the game. So return returns us back to the main menu. So let's start. This is the standard. It comes with a little bit of text. It's just the blank thing. You can come in and you can change this. So see Eileen, which is just the standard. See how it says BG room? That's background room. There's Eileen, happy, so that's the sprite. And Eileen says, you've made a new RemPy game. Now see there's back, history, skip, auto, save, quick save, quick load, and preferences. So quick save, so we just quick save that. And then if we go here, see our quick saves? It's right there, but it's not in our regular saves. So that's like if you can't decide between two choices and you wanna see like, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? And then return. I remember something about the volume levels are not good defaults. Yes, so RenPy, um, you really have to mess with the volumes as a dev because sometimes like the music can be absurdly low or loud. Sometimes, especially when you, it, it happens a lot when you add voice acting where the voice acting can be lower than the sound effects or the sound effects pop over the voice acting. You really have to play test a lot and adjust the levels according to what you have recorded. So let's see. Once you add a story, pictures, and music, you can release it to the world. Done, that's our game so far. So let's see what that looks like in code, right? So just quickly note the BG room, note Eileen happy, and note the text here, right? Great, so I'm gonna quit, that's gonna close the game. So we're going to click on edit file script.rpy. Is there a way to change the default volume levels? Yes, absolutely there is. Um, I'll show you how. That's definitely a later down the road play test thing though, so don't stress too much about it. Okay, so this is Adam, and this is the code for the game that we just saw. So the script of your game goes in this file. Declare characters used in this game. The color arguments colorizes the name of the characters. Define E, the game starts here. Label start, label, scene, show. Okay, so Adam's great by color coding a lot of the things. So if you see here, there's our game, our game folder, which is what we saw before. Oh yeah, of course. There. I forgot how to increase the text size, let me see. Text, but I will. Is it just like a, a control plus maybe? Ah, yes, love that. Love when things are just universally. Let's see. That looks good to me. Let me know what you think. Okay, so. You have your game folder over here. That's the game folder that we were looking at before. Remember audio, GUI, and images? We already looked at these. So TL, so that's the actual code right here. So if you see, we can go into all these. It's the GUI code. We'll go through this in a bit. Don't freak out too much. The options code, don't worry about it too much. Screens, and then the script. The script's the important one that we're doing with right now. We can get rid of these. So, Let's drink some water. Ah. The orange is Python code. This, the white, is what your files are named, your image files. The green is text shown. If you see, remember it said you've created a new RemPy game once you add a story, blah, blah, blah. There you are, that's what that is. So they've already defined a character for us. So we could down here write like Eileen, hello toads. And that would pop up as Eileen. 
But imagine you're going back and forth with dialogue and having to write that out every single time. So instead, we're going to declare characters, or define characters. So C so define E. So E equals character Eileen. So let's do another one. Let's define A as character Elena. And you can do yours. Define J as Jeffrey or whatever. Go ahead and add it. And then down here, we're going to take what we declared, A, and we're going to write some cool message. When actually making a game like Call Me Sarah, would you recommend doing all your game narrative fixing up this story before starting to code? That's a really good question. I will show you Scrivener. This is more narrative and less coding, but I'm happy to show you. Scrivener is just taking a second to pop up. Okay, let me... Uh, hang on, let me open up something that isn't uh, spoilers for our new game. <laughs> uh, do I have one that I can show you? Oh, you know what? I'll just open a new one. How's that? Yes, new project. Let's, okay, I'll show you the screen now. What happens if you need multiple characters with the same name or similar names? If there were two aliens, you might do E1 and E2. Yes, however, there might be an issue when it comes to the numbers. I don't think you can have numbers involved. We can test it right now just to make sure, but there's something in the back of my mind saying that maybe you can't have numbers. So, um, Maybe like make e I, I for like Eileen or you know I, E I for one of them and then E for the other one or something. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you would just need to have them slightly separate. I don't think you can use numbers, but we'll test that in just a second. Okay, so look, this is Scrivener. Scrivener is a narrative and writing tool. It's usually used for, as you can see, um, novels and script writing, that sort of thing. But I've made us a visual novel template. You can actually purchase this on itch. It's 10 bucks under Tyboy. Um, so a visual novel template right here. And let's save it as Toad House Tutorial, right? And I'm gonna swap so I can just browse because I don't want any NDA stuff going. And let's go documents and let's say Team Ted House. Select folder. Okay. So thank you, Maya. So I have documents, Team Toad House, and that's where it's gonna be saved. Save this Toad House tutorial and a visual novel template. Create. Right, so this is all the stuff that comes with, like if you buy it on itch, it explains how to use it. But for example, I have my storyboard here. So I would write out the like plot here. So let's let's go through it actually. What's a, what's a common story that a lot of people would know? Like a fairy tale or something. This is Scrivener. Like a, so let's do Rapunzel. Um, so, we could write the basic outline under here and then in narrative write the um, dialogue with a bit of the basic code. So for the hook and inciting incident, right? So let's say Rapunzel, um, we meet, I don't know, of course you choose Rapunzel, that's a difficult word. So we meet Rapunzel, uh, we set up that she lives alone in a tower. Did the Disney one make up the lights thing or is that always a thing? Um, every day on, or every year on her birthday, every year on her birthday, she sees lights. So then we write down here, like the whole, all the details and all the story, right? So we, we say she grabs the pots and she does this and everything for the little scene. So then, uh, and, and she sees her stepmother, right? So then we would go to the narrative one and we'd go to this one and we would write, um, so R for Rapunzel. Um, 
Wow, it's my birthday and I'm seeing lights again. And then stepmother could be asked and no, you're not allowed because I don't know the story of Rapunzel. <laughs> I know she's not allowed to do stuff. And then stay in your tower. So then we can take all of this copy and bring it to here. And then it's already just highlight and tab over. It's already there. So we put like, let's say the declare the the define things in 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 RemPy itself. But as for how to write it in another documentation to make sure spell check and all of that is done so you can edit it, do something like that and then copy and paste the actual dialogue into here. And then even let's say you're in Scrivener and you want the music to change. So play music, sad song. Um, and then scene change to like a uh, Rapunzel. How do you spell Rapunzel? Rapunzel room. You can put this all into the thing so you can copy paste even more. Nobody understands me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And copy paste that. So these little in between code things and the uh, quotes and the defined, I would put in something else as I wrote, but then the code that goes kind of like above the label start, so the defines and stuff, I would put directly into RenPy. I hope that answers your question. Let me know if it doesn't. I'd be happy to clarify. Everyone drinks some water because Waterbot says so. So let's test the e, E1 e thing, right? Well, let's first, one thing at a time. Let's test the Alana thing. So control S for saving the script into RunPy. We have two RunPy launchers open. Oh, because one of them was an old one. Let me reopen RunPy. And RunPy does take a hot second to open. So does Scrivener to be fair. Okay, so we are looking for Toad House Jam and Launch Project. As you can see, with nothing there, it has nothing. So this is commonly in visual novels used for inner thoughts or narrators. It's up to you. So let's say we use it for the narrator. We can say, um, Alana goes to the other side of the room. E1 for Alana, because that's what we decided. Um, I am the coolest in all the land. And then we can have Eileen go, uh, no, you're not. And then Eileen stabs Alana in the back. Fiend. <laughs> so in here, <laughs> You'll see. Our dad, the coolest. Oh, we forgot. So see how we were in here. We didn't press Shift R. So Shift R reloads it with the new thing. So Shift R. There we are. Once you add a story, you can release it. Aren't I the coolest? Elena goes to the other side of the room. I'm the coolest in all the land. Uh, no, you're not. Eileen stabs Elena in the back. Fiend. Darn. <laughs> That did get intense quickly, didn't it, Vasu? Hi, welcome, dude. Lovely, okay. So, is it possible to place narration text somewhere else on the screen? Yeah, it is. Is it worth it? <laughs> so, it is possible to place the text wherever you like. Um, there's two main text modes in RenPy. There's the bottom one and there's the full screen. So the full screens are called NVLs. Um, that's when it takes up the whole thing. I will show you an example of one right now. So good looking home cooking, launch project. Let me pause this music because we have music on here. You 
can change your avatar from a Bulbasaur if you like. It's exclamation point avatar space and then any of the first Audra 51 you have. Okay, so see how this text is in the middle of the screen? This is an NVL. It's either NGL or MVL. I think it's NVL. So you can put it here, like in the middle, or you can put it down there. Anything else is going to be a buttload of code. Um, I don't think it's worth it, especially with something that comes up as, as often as a narrator, if you're going to use a narrator. Um, I would keep it simple. However, if you really want it, you can do it. Let's see that. This is a background. This is literally just one image that we've put to make look like everything else. So this is a background. This is a choice. So you can see the two choices. We'll do this in a second and see how the text is down here. Another choice. And then this is another NVL. See how it pops up? And you can also have NVLs, as you can see, pop up sentence by sentence, as opposed to just one big thing like it did in the beginning. Hear the music. The music will be in the game folder as opposed to the audio folder because it's on the main menu. It's not part of the game. It's like outside of the game. Um, and then all of this. See how we have this over here instead of over there? We've all, we we customized this as much as you know we wanted to. We have four instead of the six because I liked it better. If you see the settings, I customized this to make it separate. Notice how there's no speed for the text because I mess with that myself. I switched it to controls instead of help. So you can customize it quite a lot. Um, it really depends on what you want to do. NVL, yes, I think it's NVL. It's either NVL or NGL. What it stands for, I'm not quite sure. It's just full screen text. Okay, so there are two main types of visual novels. There is Ones with choices and ones without. I think it's kinetic and you know who will explain this well? Eileen. So I think this is a good time to go into the tutorial. So now that you kind of see how the code in the, the script goes into the game, I'm going to show you this we can get rid of so that you don't accidentally get spoiled. Okay, so let's go to see the tutorial. So I look away and I see Eileen betraying Alana. That's funny. Okay, so click on tutorial in your RenPy launcher and we're going to launch project. So as you can see, they changed the menu picture, but it's more or less the defaults. And we're going to press start. This is Eileen. Hi, my name is Eileen, and I would like to welcome you to the RunPy tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll teach you the basics of RunPy so you can make games on your own. We'll also demonstrate many features so you can see what RunPy is capable of doing. What would you like to see? So you can open this whenever you want, anytime you have any questions, especially about basic things. So look at all the stuff. So it's anywhere from creating a new game, writing dialogue, all of this. Oh, NVL. There we go. Yeah, it is very welcome to bossing say, isn't it? <laughs> and then more in-depth stuff like character objects, transitions, and mini games. All of this teaches you all that. So let's go to the first one, just a quick start. Oh, thank you so much. It was really a wonderful group effort. I'm glad we were able to do so much. Eileen says, as someone who has played more than a few visual novels, there are many features that I expect all games to have. Saving, loading, changing preferences, and so on. One of the nice things about RemPy is that the engine provides many of these features for you. You can spend your time creating your game and let us provide these things. While you're in game, you can access the game menu by right clicking or hitting the escape key. You can also access the game menu through some of the quick menu buttons at the bottom of the screen. I honestly hate this music. So I'm going to go to preferences and I'm just gonna put it down there. It's still playing, but you know, can't stand this music. Okay. When you enter the game menu, you'll see the save screen. Click on a numbered slot and it will save the game. Unlike other engines, RemPy doesn't limit the number of save slots you have. Click on the title of the page allows you to start typing to change the name. So you can click into, for example, at save here and then 
What? Clicking on the title of the page allows you to start typing to change the name. I mean, that should have worked. That is the title. Oh, 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 this one. Um, let's say uh, before the betrayal saves, you know? Whatever we want to do. And then these are the uh, after we romanced them. So you can save it out if you like. Are you able to change the name of a game you're making midway through? Yes. However, I don't recommend it because you have to go in and change a bunch of other things. So if you were to see in Good Looking Home Cooking, um, if you were to go to, as either options or screens. Let's see. No, it's options. Okay, so you can go in and change all of this all you want, but a lot of this is kind of automatically filled in for you. Um, so as long as you remember to go in and change everything as well, you absolutely can. But go through your options in your screen menu to make sure that you're changing every little thing. So let's say it was Toad House game, but then I changed Good Looking Home Cooking. This was something that was auto done. So I actually did do that because the um, GUI code for all four vignettes are the same. So I made one and then I copy and pasted for the other three. So I had to go into every single one and change things like this. So as long as you go through, it's your options um, and change where it said the previous here too where it said the previous uh name yeah absolutely but i don't recommend it especially for a beginner because there is a lot to remember to change and it kind of does a lot of the work for you okay let's x out of this the load screen looks quite similar to the save screen and it lets you load a screen it also lets you load one of the auto saves the game menu also has a preference screen the screen lets you decide how Rempi displays, pick what Rempi skips, control. We went through all this already, Eileen. We went through all of this. While I'm, when I'm liking a visual novel, I want to see all the endings. Rempi skip function allows me to skip. See, we can press skip down here and it will go to here. So would you like to hear about rollback? Rollback is a controversial topic. I don't put rollback into our games. Basically, it allows you to see the previous screen. So you can kind of undo your choices. So if we were to scroll up, see how we can go see where we've already been. So I'm rolling up on my scroll wheel. So it brings us to what we've already passed. Um, I, it sucks because if you like accidentally double click, then you've missed that bit of dialogue. But you can always also go into your, your menu screen and look, history, it's right there. And you can read the history. It's just often a lot of people don't know where to find the history or don't know that it's in the menu. Uh, so they think that they just missed it forever, which isn't true. There's usually a history thing. There's also a history button here. Um, so it's up to you whether or not you want the choices to be permanent, but that's what rollbacks is. Like see how it says rolling forward. I'm going to click forward to the next one and then I'm going to roll back. See rolling forward and then I can roll back. I did try it. Okay, so writing dialogue, adding images. If you forget any of this, it's all here, see? So now I'm going to exit out of this game. And instead, we're going to go to the question, which is the example game that comes with Rempai. Um, if you need a temporary name to, uh, begin with at least use a distinctive name so it's easier that is a good suggestion so if you jeffrey's saying if you do need a temporary name don't choose something that's uh, choose something that's very easy to find so choose so or something that's really easy to to search for because you can control f and search for things so maybe make up a word or something so you can search for that word as opposed to like something common like love and then anytime your character says love that will pop up too Okay, so let's launch the quest the launch project the question. 
I'm pointing to my screen as if you can see where I'm pointing. I don't know why I'm doing that. Right. So this is a lovely, cute little um, example visual novel. So we're going to press start. It's only when I hear the sounds of shuffling feet and supplies being put away that I realize the lecture's over. Professor Eileen's lectures are usually interesting, but today I just couldn't concentrate on it. I had a lot of other thoughts on my mind, thoughts that accumulate in a question. It's a question that I've been meaning to ask a certain someone. When we come out of the university, I spot her right away. I've known Sylvie since we were kids. A few things to note. If you're used to playing games versus game dev, you have to start as a game developer analyzing games. So most people just kind of gloss through and go, oh, pretty, right? But let's make notes some things. Notice how the sprite cuts off at her skirt, which I'm pointing again to my screen as if you can see my mouse. The sprite cuts off at her skirt, which means it's probably at like her mid thigh. So when you ask your artist for sprites, say, so a bust would be like waist up, shoulders up, um, thigh up, you can specify where you want the character to cut off depending. Um, this is very common, about thigh up. That's what we do for our games too. Notice how she's center. Notice how it's a very pleasant expression. It's nice to have some generic expressions because you want your art to go a long way. Um, anime art is very popular for visual novels because you can easily delete this face and just put on a new one and this expression works all the same. Our games at Toad House Studio um, differ in that, that all, most of our poses are dynamic and completely change everything. So here's another choice as a game dev. Do you want the sprite to disappear when the question pops up or not? In this case, it doesn't. In our games, it does. Entirely up to you what you think's best. So as soon as she catches my eye, I decide to ask her right away. Hi there, how was class? Delete this face is my old punk band. <laughs> I can't bring myself to admit that I went in in one ear and out the other. Now notice how there's no name here, because like I said, it's either narration or inner thoughts. So for our games, it's inner thoughts. For this game, it's inner thoughts. It's a very common trope. So people who play visual novels, it was not a trope, um, I guess mechanic. Uh, people who play visual novels kind of understand that if it, there's no thing, it's an inner thought. Another thing you can do is put it in parentheses. That's a common way to say inner thoughts as well as italics. So if you want to specify um, whose inner thoughts it is, you can put in italics or parentheses, or if it's just one main character, you can do just no narration, uh, no, no name there. Up to you. All choices for you to play test and decide what works best for your game. Are you going home now? Want to walk back with me? Sure. After a short while, we reach the meadow just outside the neighborhood where we both live. Here's a scenic view I've grown used to. Autumn is especially beautiful here. I highly recommend when you write your visual novel, uh, this is less about coding and more about writing, but to uh, have all the five senses included. So we already see the scenic view, right? It would be nice if instead they were just like, oh, the breeze smells like the first day of school, autumn is here, you know? Elicit all the senses. We already see this, so it's nice to have your other senses included. Especially because remember this is just, it's a novel, it's a book that has pictures. When we were children, we played in these meadows a lot, so now they're full of memories. Hey, um, she turns to me. Now notice this, let's see if this game has rollback. Oh, it does, see, it allows me to go back. So it has rollback, my games don't, this game does. Now watch the sprite and how it pops up. It doesn't just pop up, it dissolves. So there's a couple of transitional fades, uh, transitions that you will learn as you're coding and as you're working on Pi. Fade and Dissolve are two of the more popular ones. The difference between Fade and Dissolve is that Fade includes a black screen. So Dissolve kind of just dissolves. Fade fades to black either in or out depending. So that was a Dissolve, so watch. Dissolve and she kind of appears. It's pleasant on the eyes as opposed to maybe she jumps in front of you and you really want that startle. That is no transition. It's a poof. Or even maybe a zoom. A zoom and then pass back. If you remember in Good Looking Home Cooking when um, 
when Amira gets upset with Jessica, we have her zoom in and we have her get it closer to the camera almost because it makes the, the player, because you're sitting here on the screen, right? And if some a face comes close to you, the player will go like this too. And you want to elicit those emotional reactions from your players. I'll ask her, um, will you, will you be my artist for a visual novel? Silence. She looks so shocked, I begin to fear the worst, but then, sure, but what's a visual novel? It's a video game or it's an interactive book? Let's say it's a video game. It's kind of a video game you can play on your computer or a console. Visual novels tell a story with pictures and music. Sometimes you get to make choices that affect the outcome of a story. So it's like the choose your own adventure books? Exactly. I've got a bunch of different ideas that I think would work. And I thought maybe you could help me since I know you like to draw. We did learn this on Monday. If anyone came to our lunch party, this is what we went through. We should have just done this for our lunch party. <laughs> ah, I'm working a million jobs. I'm sorry. My mind's not completely in any situation. Okay. Oh, thank you for listening to that, Jeffrey. There's good looking home cooking. It'd be hard for me to make a visual novel alone. True. Well, sure, I can try. I just hope I don't disappoint you. You could never disappoint me, Sylvie. That fade, see the background now. So now it's a transition with the background. And notice how the sprite and the background fade at the same time. That's also a choice. You don't have to do that. You can have them fade separate. Maybe if you want the character to linger a bit, the background can fade and then the character can fade. Totally up to you and the emotion you're going for. But that is a fade because it fades to black. So this is a scene black, I'll show you that too. So it became a visual novel creating duo. Black scenes are great for like a time jump or alone in your thoughts. You'll see when my characters get upset and I want them to be really in their own head, it fades to black. I usually start on black. Over the years, we make lots of games and have lots of fun making them. See, that black was used as a time skip. Very useful and cheap, it's built into Rempi. We take turns coming up with stories and characters and support each other to make some great games. I get ideas because of this. Oh no, good, please get all the ideas. I want you to be inspired. And one day, Sylvie's all grown up. See, that was another fade, a nice fade. Hey, yes, will you marry me? What, where did this come from? Come on, how long have we been dating? A while. These last few years, we've been making visual novels together, spending time together, helping each other. See, love is possible via <laughs> game death. <laughs> Everyone, uh, take a drink of water, because Waterbot says so. <sighs> I've gotten to know you and care for you, about you, better than anyone else. And I think the same goes for you, right? Now notice a few things here. This has two sentences. This has one long sentence. These are little short things. So it's up to you whether you want like a short, 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 long, whatever, a bunch of things. Try to think of like a flow of conversation, how you want to group things. You don't want a wall of text because then not only is it difficult for anyone to read, but particularly for accessibility reasons, you want people with dyslexia, ADHD to be able to read and play your games. So you don't want too much, but you do want to like feed it bit by bit. And if maybe there's a lot of short sentences together, it, it feels staccato to have them all separate. Sylvie? But I know you're the indecisive type. If I held back, who knows when you propose? So will you marry me? See, look. So this is still Sylvie. It's Sylvie twice in a row. But we, we said this and then the big Will you marry me? That's like a lovely alone moment. Now imagine if we had all this together. It would kind of dampen the importance of that question. I know you're the indecisive type. If I held back, who knows when you propose? So will you marry me? It feels very rushed, right? Which is a good thing if the character's rushing. But in this case, she thought it out. Will you marry me? Lovely. Of course I will. Actually, I've been meaning to propose. Honest. This is another game dev um, decision. It could have been, of course I will. Beat. Next one, I've been meaning to to propose. I aren't honest, I, I've been meaning to. That might be like a more like, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to, like a, 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 a solid and then like a more nervous character. But our character's not nervous, so of course I will. I've been meaning to promise, uh, I've been meaning to propose, I promise. I know, I know. I guess I was too worried about timing and I wanted to ask the right question at the right time. You worry too much. If this was a visual novel, I could pick an option and give you more courage. 
we get married shortly after. Our visual novel duo lives on even after we're married, and I tried my best to be more decisive. Together, we live happily ever after. See, good ending. Another thing is visual novels, they usually don't tell you this, but visual novels usually, very basic, have a good ending, bad ending, and lukewarm ending. So in Good Looking Home Cooking, you the, the food court is successful, and then these two, they're not successful. This one, they never talk together again. This, they're still friends, but it's, uh, they're, they're, they still don't have the food court, so it's up to you. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> game's been out two months. If you haven't played it, where, what have you been doing? I'm too busy running a game jam to make a game jam game. <laughs> I know the feeling. Okay, so now that we've played the game once, let's look at the code script. So you can look at the question, go here, and then open the script, and you can see, and you can honestly copy and paste from the game that comes with RenPy. So let's read this together. Declare characters used by this game. So we defined Sylvie and me. And notice these colors. So these colors are slightly different, right? These are hex codes. If you're not familiar with hex codes, basically they're, uh, they're colors that uh, code understands. So they eat, you can look up the hex code of whatever color. Um, and this changes the color of the text. So if you see here, we have white, 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 white text, white text, white text. Ask her right away. So see how this is kind of like a green to match her dress, Sylvie's name. And this is like a purple. See that? That's what we're changing. So let's change this to, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. We saved it. We're going to reload this by uh, shift R. Let me, let me choose a better hex code actually, something more obnoxious. Where'd my mouse go? Here it is. Hex code red. So see how I saved there, but because I already pressed shift R, did you hear the music restart? And notice how Sylvie's now in red. Because once we press a shift R once, we're kind of in dev mode. And see how it says auto reload right here? That's how you know. So every time you save in Atom, it will automatically reload whatever you just saved. And now Sylvie's in red. So we have the character, and that's what will pop up. Now let's say we want her to be Sylvia. Sylvia. Let's say we hate the name Sylvia and we want her to be Sophia. Sophia. So you change, the The best way to code is to not have to go to a bunch of different places and change sorts of things. So let's say you, instead of, um, instead of using the, the define thing here and you typed out her name every single time, you'd have to type, uh, go back and like fix whatever name, change her name every single time. So it's better to declare something and then in your little paragraph up here when you're declaring things, change it all here so that every time S pops up, you have it there. Does that make sense? Would you say we need to know any Python at all before looking at the documentation? It helps, but you do not need it whatsoever. Not at all. RumPy is very, very beginner friendly. All right, so that's Sophia. So now we know how to do that, right? So this is a variable. So. These create flags. Take all this in. I promise it will get easier as you go along. So when you have a flag, it's almost like your choices matter, right? Most of the time in a visual novel. So when 
you make a choice, sometimes there'll be a flag. I'll show you in my own code what I mean in a second. When you put a flag in, the game doesn't know what to do with that unless you tell it. So you have to make a default. So we pay default book false, which means when we get the flag for a book, it kind of raises a little red flag and that makes it true. I'll show you that in our little example and then I'll show you that in Good Looking Home Cooking in a second. The label start, game starts here. Label, think of each of these as like almost little folders of code. So each label is kind of like a little section. So label start is the beginning of it, but like say there's a big choice. I'll show you my own code. Um, you can create another label to jump to or to call. I know I'm getting a little technical. Um, let's stick with the basics for now, go through this, and then I'll show you. If it gets complicated or if you start to stress out or panic, I'm here, ask your questions. We'll get through it together, don't worry. Right now we're kind of just getting used to this so this doesn't look so scary and intimidating because it can be very intimidating. And Jeffrey's right, the most important thing is indentation. So like if this, it, especially with menu, so here, if this was like this, it wouldn't work. But the good thing is that by pressing enter at the end of something, RemPy kind of does it for you. So menu are your choices. So remember it said, as soon as she catches my eye, I decide, and then our choices were to ask her right away or to ask her later. So look, we, the menu is the choice. Here's the text at the bottom. And then we have a colon and a colon. So this is one choice and the second choice. And see, jump right away, jump later. So these are labels. So to ask her right away. So if we click that one, we jump to right away. So then we jump to this label right here and all this goes. However, if we didn't, and we said to ask her later, we would jump to later. So let's find that label. In fact, we can see this next to labels. We can press this little thing here and that gets rid of all that. So we don't even have to worry about that code. So all of that's underneath label right away, but because we're not working on that right now, we're working on jump later. Let's minimize that. We're not working on label game. Let's minimize that. We're not working on label book. But just so you see, this is a flag. It's the money sign. So see, money sign book equals true. Remember up here, we defined default book equals false. That means we've come across some sort of decision choice where we said it was true. So I'm gonna minimize that because we're looking for later. Label Mary, we're not looking for that. Label leader, there we are. So when you click on this choice, it jumps to later. So label later, colon, and it will go to this little folder of, of code. Does that make sense? So we, we go through all this, and then that, that's actually the bad ending. Um, this means bold, just so you know. At the end of every section, we have to put return, otherwise the game will crash. And this is the background. So now that you've kind of seen it, let's create our own. So, are you still with me? <laughs> I know it's a lot. Um, so Toad House Jam Tutorial. So this is our game that we launched before. This is a brand new blank game, remember? And we were kind of messing with just our little betrayal story, right? So let's say we play as me. So I'm going to open up the script. And we already defined me, A, right? So label start. So scene, BG room. We could also do scene black, and that would be a black screen. But let's see BG room. Let's change it to bedroom so you can see that it changes up. So we're in our bedroom, right? Does the return go back to where you were in the prior label or does it end the game? Very good question. There are two jumps that you can do. You can either do jump or call. And that, what you're asking, is the big difference between the two of them. So if you jump 
and you press return. You've jumped, you're there. You've jumped off the cliff. There's no going back. So a return would end the game. If the game comes up to a return, it ends the game, except when you have a call. So say you make a choice and you said call instead of jump. Call is just like you're calling out to it. So if you call something, you kind of temporarily reach that little folder of code. And then the return of that returns you back to right after that call label code line. Let me know if I explained that properly. So show Eileen happy. Let's show her sad. And you'll see we don't have any sprites in our image thing, so nothing will change except for what it's called, but I'll show you that way you can test it. So we can say Eileen says, let's, let's, let's delete all of this. So Eileen says, I'm upset. I want to go on a trip. So then Alana says, where would you like to go? Then let's put a choice. So we do menu, colon, enter. See how it intended for us. So the first thing is going to be Exactly, Jeffrey. Jump label versus call label. So the first one is going to be the text that's at the bottom. So let's say, um, where would um, Eileen like to go? Let's be a narrator with the no thing. So then enter. I like to put a space, so enter, enter, but you don't have to. Now for these ones, we're going to put a colon and then we're going to say when you click that when you click that choice, what's going to happen? So let's say to the shore colon, and then we can either put text here or we can put a jump to a label. So let's start with text. Um, let's say Eileen says. I want to go to the shore. So now we're going to go back here. That way we're online of the indentation with that. See that? So um, to the mall, Eileen says, I want to go to the mall. And then let's make a third option of um, home, stay home, stay home. I want to stay home. Okay, so that's our choice, right? So let's go through each of these. So Alana says, where would you like to go? The menu, the, the, the choice will pop up. Where would Eileen like to go? To the shore. If they click that, Eileen will say, I want to go to the shore, to the mall. If they click that, Eileen will say, I want to go to the mall, stay home. Eileen will say, I want to stay home today. And then these are called vanity options. There's no flag associated with them and you're not jumping to another label. So nothing happens. It just gives you a slightly different dialogue. And so we can just, sure, whatever you want there. So see, no matter whether she says this, this, or this, Alana saying, sure, whatever you want, makes sense. So these are just to give a few more options. Maybe you throw one on in the beginning of the game to show everyone there's going to be choices in this game to get the player used to making choices. Sometimes there's just a lot of dialogue and you kind of want to engage the player a bit more, so you throw one of these in. These are just vanity ones to give them a little bit of an option and they get a slightly different voice line, and that's it. Are you making puns in my chat? <laughs> Everyone drink some water because water about so-so. Okay, so let's play the game now. So I'm going to press start, but because um, I just saved the thing, I'm going to press shift R, and that's going to load the script that we just did. Now see how it says Eileen sad? Now I'll go over this bit in a, in a second, but BG bedroom, that also changed. So when you're changing scenes, don't worry about it just yet, but when you do, see BG means background. So Rempai knows BG means background. 
So, uh, or honestly, you can use whatever. Most people use BG, but um, the the first little bit of words, you're not just going to put C in bedroom because it doesn't know what it's replacing with. By putting like BG or whatever things you want to save. So you save your background file as BG bedroom and BG sky and BG ocean or whatever, right? So RumPy knows when it says BG and you say scene next to replace whatever is already the BG file with the next BG file. Um, same with this. So Eileen sad. If I were to put then Eileen happy, it would know to replace Eileen sad with Eileen happy and not like maybe one of the other characters on the screen. So if we have two characters on the screen and we want to change the emotion of one by keeping the, the first part the same. So in this instance, Eileen, the name, I do recommend using the name, but you can use whatever you want. Um, it just changes the, the like with the like. I hope I explained that properly. So we change that to that. Is it possible to have a choice that does nothing? Not even a line is the response. Yes. I'll show you that right after this. So I'm upset. I want to go on a trip. Where would you like to go? Where would Eileen like to go? To the shore, to the mall, stay home. To the shore. I want to go to the shore. Sure, whatever you want. Let's go back because we've rolled back in this game. Where would you like to go? To the mall. I want to go to the mall. Sure, whatever you want. Where would you like to go? Stay home. I would like to stay home today. Sure, whatever you want. And we're going to click next and see how it ends the game. Why? Because look, returns right here and it's not a call. It's just continuous. So that is your basic, congrats, we made a visual novel. Boom. So let's take some of the things we looked at earlier and apply them. So the first thing that we looked at were labels, right? So let's, instead of putting all this here, let's say jump shore, right? So right here, I'm going to put label shore. And I'm going to say I hate the beach. Okay, never mind. Okay, and we're also going to put a return here because we do have um, some other options that don't jump to everything. But if all of these were jump, you didn't necessarily need this return. So let's test that. Start. And I'm going to uh, reload it. Where would you like to go? To the shore. I want to go to the shore. Now notice, see jump shore. So we jump to the label of shore. And that was the next thing. I want to go to the shore. I hate the beach. Okay, never mind. And because of return, it went back to the beginning. So far, so good? Okay. Um, let's quickly test what would happen if we didn't put anything here. I don't think this is true, but I'm just curious and I want to see if the game crashes. Yeah, it crashed. Okay, so in the instance that it does absolutely nothing, um, I would honestly just, the next line, copy and paste into this. Boom, boom, boom. That's how I would handle that. Empty quotes will show up as a blank. The, the player will have to press enter to get past empty quotes. I'll show you with this. Okay. So we're going to reload this. Oh, did we crash it so much we need to quit the game? We did. <laughs> All right, launch project. Where would you like to go? 
to the mall. This is the empty quotes. See? It, oh, well, we have the A. But it would just be a blank. So, reloading script to the mall. See how it's just empty? That's what empty quotes does. So the player would have to press enter, which even if you do that purposefully, I highly recommend putting a dot, dot, dot if you're gonna do that because a player might think that your game's just busted because gamers love pretending that devs are lazy and stupid. So if you're going to make a decision like that, make it very intentional. Otherwise they're gonna be like, oh, the game's busted. So let's see the other ones. Where would you like to go? To the shore, share whatever you want. I w that's how I would handle the, uh, it does nothing. Just have it do the same thing and then just continue. So let's say jump shore. Um, let's make a jump mall. So let's make a, we can honestly just copy and paste all this and change some of it. Why work? Harder if you don't have to. Label mall. Hi, Toads. Thank you for following. I want to go to the mall. I want a voice clip of that. Oh, that game's busted. <laughs> Lazy devs. I mean, well, as you now know, being game devs yourself with this, uh, with this game jam, a lot of decision making, right? And it's a lot of work, but no. Lazy devs didn't add multiplayer online support in a weekend. It would have been so simple for them to just make many different choices. They have some vanity choices in there. Then you do it, Chad. You do it. Okay, so let's do... Uh, let's do an instance where we don't jump in the last one. Let's say the last decision, we just continue on. So we have um, Eileen say... Uh, I want to stay home today and then Helena can say okay weird you said you wanted a trip but sure cool right all right so let's test this hi welcome in so we're going to control R to reload see so auto reloads on I do that because sometimes when you're on the main menu, uh, the R, the shift R doesn't necessarily reload it. So I just do it once I'm in the game. So I'm upset. I want to go on a trip. Where would you like to go? Let's say um, to the shore. I want to go to the shore. I hate the beach. Okay, never mind. Great. Sand. Sand. I don't know why I said sand. Oh, I know why I said sand because I'm thinking that for next, but that's fine. Okay, I'm upset. I want to go to the beach. Where would you like to go? Or I want to go on a trip. Where would you like to go? I'm sorry. I'm tired and hungry. All right. So stay home. I want to stay home today. So see, that is, it's not a jump. It's just what she says, right? And then see how it just continued? So remember our first example where they all just continued? Well, without a jump, it will just continue. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right Anakin <laughs> and then finally uh I want to go to the mall I hate the beach oh well we didn't change that did we I'm going to the mall I hate the mall now watch save it will auto reload see that I want to the mall I hate the mall because we're in the game and auto reload is on you can check up here and that's the shift r okay never mind done all right so that is Another, this is the basic choices, right? So we showed choices where nothing happens. We showed jumps. So let's say this one, we do a call instead. So what does call do? Call makes it so that when we return, so see, call sure, we're calling this instead of jumping to it. So jump, you're jumping off a cliff. You're there, you're not going back call you're just calling for it so when you get to this return it's going to pop us right back here and continue on to the next thing so this will go so let's make this make sense so she says you want a trip so let's say we go to the shore i hate the beach okay never mind i didn't want to go on a trip anyway all right so Sometimes we crash the game. That's fine. We can just reload it. <laughs> Launch. 
Okay, so start. I'm upset I want to go on a trip. Where would you like to go? Let's go to the shore. So now, remember, we are calling the shore, which means we'll go through all this, and when we hit return, because it's call and not jump, it will pop okay. us right back here, and it will continue on to here. Hello, welcome in. Thank you. To the shore. I want to go to the shore. I hate the beach. Okay, never mind. I didn't want to go on a trip anyway. Okay, weird. You said you wanted a trip, but sure. So we have that one. Let's say stay home. I want to stay home today. So stay home. There's no choice. So we'll just continue on. So, okay, weird. You said you wanted a trip, but sure. There. All right. And then finally, jump mall. So for this one, let's put a flag. So, hmm. Actually, instead of the mall, let's do like a... Let's do this mall. Why did I just do that? I could have just, it's fine. And let's do call mall. So I'm just changing that. And then let's do jump. Mm. Yeah, jump, shore. Yeah, let's call it. Let's call the shore as well. Which means we honestly don't need this return. Uh, yeah, we do because we're calling. Okay, cool. Call short. Okay, so the mall is, I want to go to the mall. I hate the mall. Okay, never mind. I don't want to go on a trip anyway. So let's change this to shore. And I want to go to the beach. Um, I hate the beach. Now this is, okay, weird, you want to trip a shore. So actually let's jump to the shore so we can continue our story here. Pretty please. Alana says, okay, fine. Now, after we jump to the shore, we're going to change a flag. So there's two steps to putting down a flag. We have to define it and then we're going to change it. So let's put the second half first because I'm right here. So here, that is what we do to change a flag. I'm going to make name the flag beach and I'm going to name it true. Then up here, in anything above label start, you can do anything. So I'm going to make a little like cute flags. Okay, so it is, is it define or is it, is default, it's default. Default, and we named it beach, right? Beach. Beach equals false. So when the game starts, all of this is already true because it loads up. So when the game starts, the default beach is false because what does true mean? The game doesn't know. It's just like when we get to the flag, it'll be like beach, true, fine, whatever. I don't know what that means, whatever. But here we told them beach is false. And then we go through the game. We go through the game. They click onto the shore. They jump to the shore. And now we made beach true, which means that choice, the beach is now true. It can be whatever we want. So later on, Let's let's just test that before I get too ahead of myself. That reminds me when I learned this for a game, pause must resume, because I added a related mechanic, a new way to jump. Everyone stretch, because Maya redeemed it. Up this way, up this way, back, roll your shoulders, ear to shoulder, here, and here. Woo, nice, thank you for the stretch. Okay, so start. I'm upset I'm gonna go to the beach. I wanna go to, on a trip. Let's go to the shore. I wanna go to the shore. I hate the beach. Okay, never mind. I didn't wanna go on a trip anyway. Oh, wait. We, uh, we didn't reload. Okay, where would you like to go? To the shore. 
I want to go to the beach. I hate the sand. It's coarse. It's rough. It gets everywhere. Pretty please. Okay, fine. So that just ends the game. We didn't do anything with this, but that's true. Okay, so watch this. So let's... Let's make this call. It's difficult to make that make sense for all three of them, but um, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say, okay, sure. She agrees to whatever. Um, so, if beach, is there a coal in there? I feel like there's a coal in there. There's sand in my shoes. I think that's it. I have to look it up really quick if I, if I got that wrong, but let's see. Let's here, reload, sure. I want to go to the beach. I hate the sand. It's coarse. Rubs. Get everywhere. Pretty please. Okay, sure. There's sand in my shoes because the flag was true. Beach flag is true. And so we're saying if beach, and that means if the beach is true, meaning that flag, if it's raised, she says there's sand in my shoes. So that worked. Now watch. Where would you like to go? To the mall. I want to go to the mall. I hate the mall. Okay, never mind. Okay, sure game end because even though this is next beach is not true does that make sense so that's how you raise flags in games with this you can create so many visual novels <laughs> oops 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 okay so Let me show you our code for good looking home cooking. Good looking home cooking. Spoilers, if you haven't played it yet. Okay, script. So, here is the code. I have, before the, before the game starts, my code separated in different categories. So, sounds. So, these are all define this. So this is the actual thing, the file that's saved. And then I have it here. That way I don't have to type that out every single time. So I can just press audio dot whatever, audio, or even just this. See, angry doorbell, fist pound. Instead of all of this, I can remember instead of the MP3, what it is, define it, and then just later on put those sounds. Does the flag get saved? with the built-in save load mechanic. If the, if the save is like, if you save the game after you've clicked it, then yes. If you save the game, um, it depends on where it is. So like if, if the, the, if the flag is in the code before the point that they save, then yes. If it's afterwards, then no if that makes sense. I look different. Frankie, you know it's rude to comment on people's appearance. I know you don't mean anything by it, but it's rude, don't do that. Um, hasn't played it yet. Hasn't played what yet? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, this is my, my gooey blinky arrow at the bottom. No worries, I know you don't mean anything by it. Um, this is my cursor because we've got a default cursor. So, you know, you can do a whole bunch of things. Here's all the characters. So define you. Um, so this is the, the color. I have all the color the same because I wanted to change uh, other things than the, the color. I changed the name box, which is a bit more complicated. So the, the name box, where the, the box that the name's in, I changed that color instead of the color of the text. This is the, the blinkiness. This is for accessibility, what alt. 
So basically, if you've got the TTS on, it will say, um, like Amira says, and then the text, as opposed to just reading it out. Um, this is the blinky arrow that happens, um, you know, the text box. And when they're speaking, there's a blinky arrow here. So when they're talking, the blinky arrow goes the same for all of them that I put what that means here. So it's the gooey arrow, the little brown arrow at the bottom of the text box. And I made it blink. Uh, you can. So see here, this is just a string. So this is just a text string. You can put whatever you want between these things. The thing is you can't put that here. So um, if I wanted to put that as like a, that doesn't work. So I just did UN for unknown. And then I put it like that. Um, the narrator and narrator two. So I have the narrator two because that's an NVL. So the NVLs have different codes than narrator. And if you can see narrator, I have as italics. So for me, not only is it no name, but it's also italic. So I have my little variables. Remember, good looking home cooking is only an hour long game. If you saw this for Call Me Sarah, it's like 10 pages long. But for good looking home cooking, these are the rememberable, important, game-changing choices. So there's the bubble tea choice, the Imani talk choice, and the Kenta talk choice. And notice friends equals zero. I'll show you that code in a second. This is C rollback and a false. Choices matter, I don't allow it. This is just for the TTS voice. But see, I have all my code up here. I have the volume thing, because like Jeffrey said earlier in this stream, you kind of have to mess with it. I have, um, this is how fast the speed is for the text because I wanna be able to control it. Um, these are all transformations and positionings as you can see. So I have it so that this is all um, shorthand cause see how I'm declaring it. So you'll see I have like slight left, right. RemPy comes with right, left and center by default but I wanted things that were slightly different so I defined them myself. So this is the X, Y of the positioning of the sprite on the uh, on on the game screen. So label splash screen, because we have a splash screen before you start. It's the Team Toad House logo. There's a little bit of a delay. Scene played black. Like you have to code all this in. Um, okay, so let's go to the actual game. So label start. So the actual game starts here. So see scene black. And we have the actual text and then Amira, Jessica, etc. The no alt things are for TTS. So see how it's spelt this way, but it's said this way. So when it says Fern V, no alt means TTS doesn't read that. Alt means TTS reads that. So anytime there's a weird pronunciation of something, I have to phonetically put it in. So scene BG food truck. Now see how it said scene here? Scene, well, black is built in, but scene will replace scene. Show will replace show. Now see how there's show Amir and show Jessica? If I didn't, if I just put show proud, show proud, it would just replace what's ever there. But because it's looking for the two of them, Amir will replace Amira and Jessica will replace Jessica. And see at slight left, at center right, those are the declarations I put up there. And then with dissolve. Because I put with dissolve down here, all of this will go with the same dissolve. If I wanted a mirror to show and then Jessica, I would put show a mirror at site left with dissolve and then show Jessica with dissolve. I'd put two with dissolves. Is there a way to centralize the pronunciation changes? Probably. I don't know. Um, it's difficult because it's within a string and you can put whatever you want within the string. Uh, so I just did one and then I uh, control F for place all, and that's how I handled it. <laughs> okay, so see the alt text as well, alt. So I showed, if you hear it, it says this pops up. So this doesn't show with people who don't have TTS on, but this does show with people who have TTS on. TTS on is the text voice, as Frankie says, the scary voice. So see, hi Namir, hi Jessica. So we could, hide people just with that hide the sprite so see how it just says hide it's not that i have to put hide jessica happy jessica is like the root sprite so it knows that 
is what it's dealing with. And then these are just variations of it. Um, if we go to a choice, ignore this. This is because it's already been built. Um, that You don't do this. Rempi does that. Usually I just do call choice. So if you look at my call labels, because I have two different things, these are where I put my little extra bubbles that I call from. Oh, I am about two hours in. I need to eat soon. See, I like this stuff, so I get lost in it. Thank you. We'll end shortly, because we're basically covered everything. So I have label choice beep. So see, call choice beep. Play sound choice. So I declare that up there. So that's a little like ding -a -ding, that plays anytime there's a choice and then return. And because it's a return, it brings us right back here. So menu, we slip up. There's no way our food court will last the year. So the sound was interrupted by this choice beep. So I have to get the sound working again because this is a play sound and sound will replace sound. So I needed to put that in there. But notice how this first choice is just a vanity choice. Notice how it's just two different texts and no flags, no nothing, no jumps, no calls. This is just a choice early in the game so that people know that there's choices in this game and to get them prepared to make choices. That's all that is. Um, so if we go down to when Nina talks to them, so see how right here we have a choice, check in with Amira, or we can jump so we can ignore Amira. So if you ignore Amira, she can handle herself, you get this text and then we jump to it. So this will just continue. So without saying a word, then you get all the Morse code and all of that. But here, we can just jump all this, we skip all this, and we go to ignore a mirror. And then it just continues on to there. So you miss that little scene if you do this. I'd love a complete tour on the GLHC code. <laughs> it's a bit messy. <laughs> um, okay, so... We have another choice here. So see, menu... Jump, no bubble T. Oh, I think that's a great idea. So it continues on because there's no jump or anything from here, right? So you skip these two lines if you click this one and jump the no bubble T to here. And if you notice, the flag is here in between this choice. So if you jump and say, no, we're not going to, uh, I wonder what it's like to be that unaware. Um, you miss the flag going up with the bubble tea, which means later on when, see the bubble tea, bubble tea end. So look here. If bubble tea, call bubble tea end. So you miss this little scene where we talk about the bubble tea and our bubble tea slapping. So see by doing the math with the flags, we're able to give various different endings with pockets of different scenes without having to write 10 different stories. Because if you think of a branch in dialogue, so we go into New York City, I say I want pizza and you say you want ice cream. We go with pizza. We go with ice cream. Now these are two different stories. So as a game developer, you either have to make the decision to reconnect them after you go get them and then maybe keep track of them with a flag or continue these as two different stories and write two different stories and every choice is a different story. So it's nice with the flags to just remember choices and then loop them back in and call instead of jump. That way you can call, have a little pocket of a scene and remember with flags, different choices you make. So you can pull different pockets like we did with the Nina scenes or you can jump to a different section and maybe only have three different stories with different pockets of dialogue with occasional vanity ones with a different line here or there thrown in so that it feels dynamic, it feels big without having to, like, you know, keep your scope small because you're in a game jam. Plus, you know, in general, just keep your scope small and that's how you do it with flags. Where's the branch for enemies? Enemies? What enemies? You mean when they become enemies? The worst end. Jump, worst end. They stop talking. The worst or worst or end? I mean, this is pretty bad. They're not friends anymore. And then jump, end. <laughs> right here. It's the worst ending. If it equals zero, then it goes here. And then if you see jump end, label end, we've seen fade to black no matter what. It all jumps to the end. 
the music stops, and then we jump credits. And then credits, it's basically a very long PNG that I have scroll up. So see how it says the speed is 120, and then uh, see show, so we're showing the image, just like we showed the sprites and all that. So show image at, and then see how I have this move. And then I've defined credit speed, so it knows credit speed. And then I said in the middle of the screen, starting at the bottom. So Y starting at the bottom, X in the middle of the screen. So it goes like this, and it moves like that. And so it's just one big PNG that scrolls up through the background, and that's the credits. And then at the end, jump to the Call Me Sarah trailer, and then we just play this movie cutscene, and we return, that's the end of the game. Mm, it's a PNG so that the background's transparent. You could do a JPEG, but I like how it looks better with the PNG, because I can have the, see the scene? So scene is your backgrounds, right? BG Blink 2. That's the notebook looking thing. So, um, uh, could I show you, let's see, oh, no, no, it's, it's just a PNG, you're overthinking it, friend, <laughs> uh, all right, so, can we load a quick one, maybe, no, start, so I'm skipping. Notice how I moved my stuff up here because I like it better that way. I don't mind that it's hidden. I'm keeping it for the people who love Renpai, but I, I it's fine the way it is. So that's a vanity one as we saw. That's just to get people. So see, this is slight right. See the dissolves, dissolve. See how the name box is different, but all the names are in white. It's all just choices you make as a game developer. And if you look up here, when I press skip, You'll see the little skipping guy. Um, so we're going to ignore, so we're going to skip that little cute thing, right? Now see, I wonder what it's like to be unaware, but if we do something extra, she might post about it. That means we're going to get the flag. So we get the nine at the scene at the end. Okay, I'm just going to get to the end. So again, would you like to talk about it? This will give us the flag. Meanwhile, the other one won't. And again, we want to talk to Kenta for the flag. Okay. So because we got the flag on Nina, you'll see Nina shows up. Boom. If we didn't do that, Nina wouldn't show up. So we this whole little scene with Nina wouldn't exist. So it would just skip to... Right here, the food smells delicious. It would just skip that whole thing. But because the flag's up, it calls it. Follow? And then if you wanna see, so this is like BG Ramadan, this background. So this is scene black, built into Rampai, if you want a black scene. This is BG blank. We have BG Blank and BG Blank 2. BG Blank 2 is the one with like the more of this. And then BG Blank is the lines. But this is just the background that we put with all this. And then this is um, show. So show with this, show with that. Um, and these aren't two separate things. These are the same. And basically Heather and I worked on making it so that this is, uh, so this is like image three, right? This is image four. The scrolling up action is what we did and we saved it. So then image five, we made it look like it scrolled up and we cut it. So these are all just one image. It's not like there's four different images on the screen right now. The whole text message is one image. This is image five, then image six. And as we saved it, we just kind of shushed them up in Photoshop and made it look like it scrolled. So it looks like a big bunch of things popping up on your screen, but it's not. It's just show one image over on the side. Yeah. That's this. So it's a really cool effect, but it's just show image. So this is again, show image, show sprite at center left. 
and center right with dissolve. If I wanted them both to pop out at the same time, I could have said with dissolve afterwards. And then I'll show you the credits. So we fade to black, scene black. And then this is just one long PNG, the, the BG black two. So see how BG blank two is the lines, but with the thing over it. And then this is an image that we just have that move code um, right here. See, it's just moving and then it credits speed. I have it at 120. If it was longer credits, I would adjust that or shorter credits. The image is automatically adapted by RemPy to the resolution or is the resolution locked? You choose the resolution when you start a new project. However, it adjusts with the size. See that? Or if I, if I wanna like, Rumpy does a pretty good job of that. But the resolution itself is locked and all of your uh, art should match that resolution. And then if you notice, so we have the pause, right? That's uh, the hardest, hard false means you can click through it. So you can skip it if you want. If you want them to sit there through the whole thing, you can press hard true. Um, that's credit speed plus 10. So basically credit speed, it takes 120 seconds to get through the credits. So plus 10. So there's a 10 second like delay at the end to kind of like, and then we jump to the trailer. So you'll see that in a second once we get through all this, but this is 120 seconds worth of credits. Cause that's how long it took to get to the point that it was easy on the eyes. It's a lot of feeling, honestly. Uh, people take it scientifically, but it is a lot of feeling. It's, this looks nice. It's slow enough that I can read it, but it's fast enough that it doesn't feel like forever. Um, this is the legal jargon I was telling you about. If you use RunPy, you have to have this somewhere. Either on your, we don't have an about page, uh, but there or like in your credit somewhere. And then see, once the image is done, it stops because it showed up. And so that's the end, it's just one big thing. So that's the end of it. And then it will pause here for 10 seconds. And that code is right here, the plus 10. Ever and then plays the, it jumps, cottage in the woods jump trailer, jump trailer, scene know. fade black, Raising and then it goes chicken? into the movie. But notice how there's no and hard anything, so we can click and we can go right back to the beginning. And that's that. And that's honestly how you make a visual novel. Um, beyond that, it's just learning and getting used to it. But those are the choices. That's how it's done. I'm not yet at the art part. And one question I keep wondering is how did you decide the sizes of the images? Trial and error. Um, I can show you our images. Images. So the sprites. Uh, properties. She's about 817 by 960 or so. Um, and that looked nice with our backgrounds. You have to see what looks nice. Like I, I highly recommend making gray blobs first. So we made gray blobs um, and put them in and threw them into Rempi and saw like how they fit. We made the backgrounds and we saw how it looked. Cause you know, depending on the background, if like someone looks really big in it or really small in it, if you make your backgrounds and it's totally cool to just take a um, Creative Commons free background, throw it into paint and throw an effect over it. I mean, a lot of people do that for their visual novels. Um, you can have the background like, uh, Whatchamacallit, um, I'm tired so I can't think of the, Karawa Shoujo does that. So I'll show you really quick. Karawa Shoujo is also a uh, Ren Pai game. I love this game. It is an H game though, so I won't show you the H parts, but you know. So see, they customized their, their menu. This probably took quite a while. Um, start. So this is the tree background, a picture of a bunch of snow trees put into a filter heavily to make it look like a watercolor with a snow effect over it. So basically they took one of these 
and they made it randomized a bunch of times over, like a flurry. So let's, so, oh, this is an example of a CG where you see the main character and it's like a scene. So my games don't have CGs because we can't afford them. I'd love to have them in the future, but it's basically like a special scene. It's usually more high quality than a regular one as opposed to like a black background with a sprite. Um, okay, so see, this is an NVL and see how that's just a hospital heavily put into a, a filter. That's all it is. See, and then we have a bunch of this. That's probably just a, uh, animation that someone made and then made scroll like a video I should say not an animation so once we get to the school I'll show you so see this is literally a picture of a school that they put into Photoshop and just heavily filtered it and that's their background um, and then they you know tell the story and then see this is another heavily heavily filtered hallway that they found on some Creative Commons website and then they have you have your sprite for them they used knees up or maybe just for him so he looks tall because we're a teenager and we want the, te the teachers to look tall and he's a teacher so we have our first question in a second um they put in a cute little thing I'd love to learn how to code that but I'm not quite sure yet where it checks it when you've done it I've played this game a million times so I've done both but like it keeps track of what you've done in the past on previous plays see how the name changes so this is another CG this is just a long image that they then just like our credits scrolled so we're watching the scroll and they timed it so that at a natural reading pace you'll probably finish by the time you get to the end of it you know We play a doc in my game. Maybe I should probably play showing the characters legs. The thing with showing the characters legs is that um, the background needs to be very far away then. <laughs> Otherwise it looks kind of wonky in proportions. But yeah, I mean, go for it. Ah, oh, yes, I need to go eat. I just love visual novels so much and I love game dev so much. Okay, so see this is top of thighs and then up to her. Um, so you can see that, that's one of the characters. But again, this is just a, a, an image heavily put through for the background and then they placed her in a way that made sense it looks like you know she's about the size of that table it makes sense it looks good your eye will tell you if you look at something and go oh that's wonky then you fix it and that's kind of where you get it exactly oh my pleasure i don't think there should be any sort of gatekeeping i think it's really cool to add to uh like see how this matches her hair to match the color in some capacity um yeah anyway yes as jeffrey says art and characters will be covered in the next workshop i believe heather's running that workshop please sign up there um it's free to sign up it just lets us know about like uh who to expect and how many to expect uh <laughs> i said i'd talk about this for 45 minutes to an hour and i ended up talking for like three hours i i really do love visual novels and i love game development i love this stuff so thanks for listening i hope you got something out of it uh I don't know how I'm going to edit this video down to a VOD, but I, I'll try. <laughs> uh, I, I hopefully it was useful and it helps all the programmers and team leads at the Game Jam to use RenPy. If you haven't picked an engine by now, you probably should. Because um, you're almost done with your first week. Actually, you are. Today's the seventh. Week one's over, so you should have your concept more or less nailed down. Uh, you should start writing like i said scrivener is great and i do have that visual novel template that you can use it's up for sale on itch um under my account not team toad house just my tie boy account um but it shows you like uh it gives you a template so if you're really stuck i gave you a blank one as well as like an example one um of things to fill out for locations and items um and then you can put those here your menu items characters and then your narrative, like to start writing out your game as well as then your templates, uh, or not your templates, sorry, your, uh, the storyboard, that's what I'm gonna say, the storyboard so you can start writing out the thing. And then narrative is kind of where you start putting your code for what you've declared. 
That way you can uh, copy and paste it directly into. Um, it also has, you know, tips and tricks and such. I'm sure somewhere I, I say to use straight quotes, but just in case, when you use Scrivener, make sure to switch it to straight quotes because the special quotes won't work in uh, RunPy. Uh, the tool, this one is Scrivener. The engine we were using is RunPy. The text editor within RunPy that I used is Atom. And uh, where is my mouse gone? If you want to see my Scrivener template is right uh, this one here. And then Jeffrey up above put the event bright for the next workshop. I think that's everything. Any questions or anything before I go and have dinner? I hope that was useful. Thanks for all your questions and for participating in chat. And uh, remember that the biggest way to prevent crunch is time management. So it's okay if you're procrastinating. I see you saying that. That's totally okay to procrastinate, but have milestones and then have a decision made of what to do if you don't hit those milestones. So for example, let's say you want three endings, but like let's say week two, if you don't have the outlines done, um, or if you don't have one of the endings completely written, maybe narrow it down to two. Uh, you really have to lower your scope the more you get on because deadlines kind of make people crunch. You don't want that. You want a little bit every day. So make yourself mini deadlines. So let's say every Friday um, you need whatever done. This Friday you need this done. Next Friday you need this done. That way there's milestones for you to hit. The more middle, little milestones you have to hit, the more little deadlines, it might feel like, oh, I have a deadline every single day, but that's actually good because it's easier. If you miss three of these deadlines, then you know you're not on a good timeline. It's not like, oh, I'm not doing great. I need to work harder. No, no, no. What you do is you go, this schedule is not working. Let's, with the data that we now have, make a schedule that does work for us and lessen your scope or make the game smaller or get another writer on. I mean, that doc under the Toad House Jam in, in Discord has tons of people who some of them aren't on teams yet. So feel free to reach out to them, get your team situated. Um, really, the key to no crunching is good time management and being honest with yourself when you're not reaching a deadline. I know it's hard because you're like, no, I'll just do better. But it's kind of like losing weight. Like if you're trying to lose weight by a wedding, right? And you're just like, no, I'm going to make this dress. I'm going to buy it two sizes smaller. That will be my motivation. Why? Just like if you want to, for example, lose weight for your wedding or something, do a little bit every single day and whatever happens, happens. You know, accept it for what it is. Just, you know what I mean? I use that as a, as a, common example I hear not that like you know people need to lose weight for weddings I'm gonna do oh a bed <laughs> I mean maybe that means that you've got too much of a chunk because often when people procrastinate it's just such an intimidating thing that maybe you need to make it that like okay so before I go to bed I'm going to set my notebook out in my workstation so that that's one less obstacle for me to do the next day or like sometimes when I'm having a really low day I open up all my programs that way the next day all I have to do is unsleep my computer and it's all there you know so we'll see well, anyway thank you everyone my pleasure uh, thanks for being part of this uh, game jam and we'll see you at the next workshop Bye, y'all.